Hello YouTube. Hello and welcome to Johnny Bill's Bible World. Today's lesson is called The Fruits of the Spirit. Okay folks, this is where the rubber meets the road. The Fruits of the Spirit. Galatians 5 verse 22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, which is patience, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, meekness, and temperance, which is self-control. Now, the flip side of that coin is Galatians uh, chapter 5, verse 19, which are the works of the flesh, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, which is the lack of moral restraint, especially sexually. Idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, which is conflict or arguing or fighting. Emulations, which is jealousy with malice. Wrath, strife, which is the struggling for selfish gain. Seditions, which is causing trouble. Heresies, which means rejecting the Bible. Envyings, which is covetousness. Murders, drunkenness, and revelings. Uh, revelings is party hard or the total loss of self-control. So what we have are 17 very bad things and 9 very good things. So um, what we have are the works of the flesh versus the fruit of the spirit. Works versus fruit. All right. Works, one is the product of man, and fruit, the other is the product of God. So, we're to walk in the Spirit, which is the product of God with the fruit, versus walking with the flesh, or walking in the flesh, which is our behavior, and the works of the flesh. Is this what the Bible says? Yes, this is what the Bible says. Galatians 5, verse 16 says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and she, ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, this brings us to the Spirit versus the flesh. Ah, the war within. It's, it's waged in the frontier of our minds, if you listen to the song by Bradley Bridges, Set Me Free, Set Me Free, Set Me Free from Me, Jesus my King. Me is the flesh. It's spirituality versus carnality, if you will. If you remember the old Disney movie in the, in the Pinocchio, Jiminy Cricket was Pinocchio's conscience. And and the little cartoon devil with the pitchfork was on the other shoulder, and Jim, and he's going, do it, do it, do it. And Jim, and he's going, no, no, don't do that. So that kind of is an illustration of the spirit versus the flesh. So how are you going to walk? Okay, you can either walk in the spirit or walk in the flesh. How are you going to walk? Examine yourselves first, okay? I, what, what I want you to do is become a fruit inspector instead of a judger, okay? Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 1, in the Sermon on the Mount, judge not, lest ye be judged, okay? Um, more importantly, what that means is that we're not to walk around with a judgmental attitude toward other people, okay? Uh, and, and that's because their sin is no better than ours, right? That's true. So you want to look at other people and say, is, is that person producing fruit? And more importantly, before you have the right to look at other people, you need to look at yourself, okay? Um, when you look
look at other Christians, do you see the fruits of the Spirit in them? Look at Dr. Mullins. Look at Dr. Hagen. Look at Brandon. Do you see good fruit being produced by them? I do. And I admire it very much. And the other thing that happens is you got to you be careful that the devil doesn't make you jealous of someone else producing good fruit. Okay? And, and that that goes against uh, makes you jealous of, of something good that they're doing. That's an old trick the devil plays to try to, to turn the tables on your faith. So, uh, what you want to do is examine yourself. And is that what the Bible says? Yes, that's what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 5 says, Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how Jesus Christ is in you except you be reprobates, meaning worthless? Lamentations, uh, chapter 3, verse 40 says, Let us search and try our ways and turn again to the Lord. So the purpose of this lesson is to get you to look at yourself and ask, Am I loving, truly agape, selfless love of Christ? Am I joyful? Am I peaceful? Am I patient? Am I gentle? Am I good? Am I faithful? Am I meek? Am I temperate? Meaning, am I letting the Spirit control me? Have I surrendered? So if you draw a triangle and... The three corners represent three clusters of three fruits. There's nine fruits of the Spirit, three each. The bottom left-hand corner is the, the three fruits that are inward, which are the first three, love, joy, and peace. Then the bottom right-hand corner of the triangle is manward, which is long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness. And the top of the triangle is Godward, which is the last three, which is faithfulness, meekness, and temperance. So, um, surrendering to the Spirit, it, it's difficult. It's not easy. You can't just make yourself do it. You can't say, I want to surrender to the Spirit and do it. You have to pray for it. You have to ask God. You have to pray that you can surrender to the Spirit and that you be filled with the Holy Spirit and produce these fruits by praying intently. Pray that you don't grieve or quench the Spirit. You have to say, Here, God, you drive. And that's the way you produce more fruit. Why? What's the purpose in life? Well, look at Romans 8, verse 28 and 29. This is one of my life verses, and I'm really big on it. And uh, I want you to watch Adrian Rogers. Uh, he's a preacher, and uh, he's been with the Lord for a number of years. And if you search Adrian Rogers on YouTube, he's got a sermon called Why Good Things Happen to Bad People. It's great, and it involves this verse. So... Romans 8, 28 and 29 says, And we know, not think, that all things, not some, work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. This tells you why we're here and what life is all about. This is why everything in life makes sense. It's a big picture thing, folks. you got to step back here and go, hmm. It's why did God create us in his image? Okay? So step back and think. Why are we here? Why, why have we been put on this earth? Why did God 
create the Garden of Eden and put Adam and Eve in it, and then all of their product, progeny all through these years up to today. Why? Okay? Well, we are here, and we've been put here and given life. We have been graced by God's purpose, and that is to make us like Jesus, to make a generation of people like his son is why God created us. Okay, and so what this lesson is about is how can we be like Jesus? The fruits of the Spirit are the character of Christ, folks. So if we're producing fruit and we're walking in the Spirit, we're being like Jesus. And that's what the key is, and that's what this whole lesson is about. So, here's what Jesus says in John chapter 15. Listen to the word of God. I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am, in the, I am the vine, and ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For, ye can, for without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so ye shall be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye abide in my love. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. If ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you, henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that you love one another. The other scriptures that I've prepared in the lesson are for you to read on your own and study John 15 over and over. It's so key to walking in the Spirit. There are many pearls or, or rhema, if you will, or truths in this profound section of scripture. So I'm going to go over each of the fruits uh, one by one. And as we abide in Christ, spiritual fruit develops in our lives. This occurs as the Holy Spirit applies the grace resources of God to our inner man. This spiritual produce then appears as godly character in us. Love is the primary indication that we're trusting in the Lord to bring forth fruit in us. The first and primary fruit of the Spirit is love. In fact, some see love as the singular fruit with joy and peace, etc., as aspects of love. So, God's um, love that flows from the heart of God. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, is 1 John 4, 7. Such love is not stirred by the lovability of the object. It's a unique heavenly love available only from the Lord. Next is joy. Uh, joy is a gladness of heart and inner spiritual happiness 
that does not depend on circumstances. It's a spiritual delight in the Lord that's always available no matter what's happening around us. And a, a good example in Scripture is Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. So, the next fruit is peace. Peace is related to a cessation of hostility between parties. It affects our relationship with the Lord. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, is Romans 5, 1. It also impacts our relationship with others. For He Himself is our peace, who has made both the Jew and the Gentile one and has broken down the middle wall of division between us. That's Ephesians 2.14. This peace also involves a spiritual calm and tranquility within our hearts. And there's a verse that's one of my favorites that speaks to this. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. I think this is one of the most profound, profound verses in Scripture, and it means don't worry, just pray. Then comes long-suffering. Long-suffering would include patience and forbearance, of which I have none, and every bit of patience I have has come from God through the Spirit. Uh, it would embrace a willingness to forgive and not to seek vengeance. Put on long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. That's Colossians 3, verses 12 and 13. Uh, note carefully, we do not produce these qualities by our own capability. The fr this fruit is a work of God in us. As the Holy Spirit works with the grace of God in our hearts, the various aspects of spiritual fruit are manifested through us. Next is kindness. I'm sorry. Uh, next is gentleness. Gentleness is moral goodness and integrity conveyed toward others. It includes showing concern and consideration to people, desiring not to offend them. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil and speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another. That's Ephesians 4, verses 31 and 32. Closely following this is goodness. Goodness is quite similar to the preceding term. The additional perspectives contained in goodness would be acts of generosity and, and, and benefice, benefit. Um, this is somewhat repetitious, concept indicates the high priority that God places upon our treatment of others. Then there's faithfulness. Faithfulness embodies responsibility and loyalty. It also comprises reliability and consistency. Moreover, it, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. That's 1 Corinthians 4, 2. I might note that faithfulness is like getting up for church every Sunday morning and really wanting to go worship God. The real emotion of looking forward to it, that's faithfulness. Next is meekness or gentleness. Gentleness and meekness are uh, explained by uh, one of my pastors used to call it as power under control or lowliness. Such quality of characters takes on special significance when we recall the words of Jesus that says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11, 29. Uh, one of the greatest meek characters in the Bible, and one of the closest men to God in the Bible that was meek was Moses. Uh, last fruit of the Spirit is self-control or temperance. Self-control is a fascinating subject because it's not what it seems at first. Natural human thinking would assume it refers to self keeping self under control. Such a description would have to be listed under the previous verses pertaining to the works of the flesh. Here it describes the Spirit of God maintaining control of our lives. When we reflect upon the fruit of the Spirit, the character of Christ typically comes to mind. This is appropriate since godly fruit comes to us through the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness 
which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and to the praise of God. When we depend on the Holy Spirit, he imparts the life of Jesus, our true vine, into and through our experience. The character of Christ is seen then in us. And consequently, all the glory and praise goes to God. This is our ultimate purpose, folks, to walk in the Spirit and to produce fruit, which makes us like Jesus. Amen? Lastly, I'd like to just look at the book of Galatians and give you a little of an overview. The book of Galatians is an epistle or a letter from Paul that was written about 49 A.D., and it was quite possibly the first letter that Paul ever wrote. He writes this book to deal with the problem of circumcision circumcision and Jewish legalism toward Gentile believers. Paul begins by declaring that salvation is through faith and trust in Jesus Christ alone and cannot be obtained through the keeping of the law. He said, Thou foolish Galatians, who put you under a spell? Who bewitched you? Was not Jesus the Messiah clearly portrayed before your very eyes as having been crucified? I want to learn only one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by doing the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish, having started out with the Spirit and are now ending up in the flesh? We can only attain salvation through trusting alone in our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now we're going to play the great song, In Christ Alone. That is the great fundamental of everything we've been talking about. Bear fruit, walk in the Spirit, and have faith and be like Jesus Christ. Amen.